Hello, hello, it's Terry Hartley with Rustic Barn Cards. Yay! Paper Pumpkin, here's to you March 2021. It has arrived. I'm so excited. So let's look and see what's inside. And so the adventure continues. We'll lay that aside. Here's our free item sponge and our stencils. Our ink spot this month is Calypso Coral. And our, our stamps. So we have a mountain, some flowers. Here's to you. Happy birthday. All the best for a happy, healthy, and prosperous year. May your journey through life take you to many new and exciting places. So we have a, maybe some birds, it looks like, flowers, the trees. Did I say mountains? Trees. Okay. It's always exciting to get my paper pumpkin kit every month because you never know exactly what is going to be in here. So I'm going to go ahead and show you everything that's in here. I'll make um, the cards by the directions and then some alternatives. So let's first look at the free items, the free stencils. So we have one stencil has clouds. There's another stencil with a cloud burst or a, yeah, kind of a sunburst, I guess you would say, a sun, sunburst. And then another stencil with stars. And then the fourth stencil is mountains. And of course our sponge, now you could leave it as one. We can also cut our sponge in fourths, cut it in half, and then a half again. And you'll dip your sponge in ink and go over your stencil. So that looks like some fun. So our direction sheet has two different designs and it makes a total of eight cards. And then inside the brochure, you have the directions how to make those two different designs. Also on the back, you have some alternative cards that Paper Pumpkin has given you. It also shows you everything that is in your kit. And we're going to go through that really quickly. I already showed you the stamps and we have some um, linen thread, some twine, and dimensionals. And then we also have our envelopes, our craft envelopes. And we have some design um, liners. So printed liners that we can just slip right inside the envelope. There we go. So we can uh, decorate our envelopes. We could also use these as designer series paper to make some alternative cards. It's kind of what I'm thinking. And then we have some uh, printed cardstock that we that we um, that are for the our cards. And we have a printed card base in petal pink. Um, old olive and the calypso coral and then here are uh, labels that we can stamp on and here we have some old olive and we have clouds that we can just punch out to use 
And then we have Pretty Peacock card base. And we also have Pretty Peacock with pine trees that we're able to punch out and use on our cards. And glue dots. And this is just the cardboard that comes with it. So we have everything we need. And the first time you order your paper pumpkin kit, you will receive a block. And that just comes in the first kit because you don't need it after that because you just reuse your, your block. So these are consumable, but consumables, but you have everything that you need to make the eight cards and extra. And then you will always have your stamp set and your ink spot and, of course, your block that you can reuse. So let's go ahead and make one of each of the two card designs. But before we do that, I did want to tell you uh, the ink spot this month, as I mentioned, is Clips of Coral. But... Paper Pumpkin will never repeat the same color of ink spot in a year. So you will, so every year you'll get 12 different stampin' spots if you order the Paper Pumpkin kit. One comes in every month and they do not repeat the colors in one year. Okay, let's make our first card. I have our card base. I have our label. And I have our clouds and the strip of old olive twine, our pine trees, uh, dimensionals, glue dots, and I have uh, a little bird. And here's to you on a block. And I'm using a, a couple blocks I already have. Okay, so let's go ahead and fold our card. Now, I can take a bone folder, and that's what I would normally do, but if you're using just the, the acrylic block that came in your kit, you can just take the edge of that and go ahead and go against your card because you have everything in your pump, paper pumpkin kit that you need. So let me lay this aside, and let's go ahead and do our stamping. So I want to stamp on my label. If you're wondering how to get the top of this off, I usually take my snips or a pair of scissors and then I just go, sometimes you have to do it uh, two or three times going across and then on the other side to get this uh, label cut and then you should be able to just open that up. Okay, so I want to put here's to you, and I'm going to ink this up. Since these are uh, the clear stamps, the photopolymer, then you can see when you have it inked up well. And I am going to just go ahead and stamp it here just to make sure. And that was a, that does look like a very good crisp image. So we'll go ahead and ink this back up. All right. And here's our label. So we will go ahead and press it down. And there we go. Here's to you. And then I'm going to bring in our cloud. And we are going to put our bird. Right here. So we will. And there we go, our two birds. And that's all the stamping that we need. So 
So I'm going to bring our card base back in. And we are going to put our pine trees on. So this goes on flat with glue dots. So I am going to bring my take your pick tool in. You can take the tops of these off with your fingernail. But sometimes, as now, I got the entire glue dot. So I'm just going to kind of hold and kind of take the top off. There we go. So sometimes it's easier for me <clears throat> to take them off, put them on, and then just take that cover off. Or I can get the covers off here and then I can just put it on my die cut. But it's Seems like it wants to pick up all of it. So I'm just going to move those over there and then take off the the tops of those. And it helps if I just kind of hold with my fingernail or my finger, hold part of that, and then the top will just come right off. So I'm holding it that way, kind of <clears throat> the glue dot will stay down and I won't get the glue dot and the backing off. I'll just get the backing off. I'll bring that in a little closer. So I'm just taking my finger and then holding it and then getting the top of it off. All right. So now let's go ahead and add our pine trees and I'm going to kind of line it up. It looks like it's just the bottom of our die cut matches the square on our card base. So this matches, so that is good. Okay, let's go ahead and bring in our old olive. We're gonna pop that up with dimensionals and they have given, a, given us uh, many, the many dimensionals. So let me go ahead and add those. So I've added four, we have plenty of dimensionals in this pack, make sure that they're not showing. And bring in our card, and this is uh, brought up a little bit closer to the die cut, the pine trees, and off center to the left a little bit. That's how the directions are, like that. So now I'm going to bring in the linen thread. You will need a pair of scissors, but that should be just about the only thing that you need because everything else comes in the paper pumpkin kit. And our label or our sentiment is going to go right here. So I'm going to put a glue dot. A couple different ways that you could do this. Then I'm going to use the glue dots to start wrapping the linen thread in a circle. So I'm going to lay one end right there on the glue dot and then I'm just going to kind of make a circle. Kind of like a lasso and then bring that around and 
and kind of shape it. I think I'm going to add one more blue dot right here to get a, a little wider shape. And I should be maybe bringing that down so you can see better. Let's see if I can do that. There we go. All right. And then if we have too much, we can always uh, snip it off too. We can take our scissors. And so just kind of kind of make like a little lasso, I guess you could say. And I'll put that right here. And I am going to put another glue dot. So I can adhere that. And then I'm going to snip this little right here. All right. And now I'm going to add dimensionals to our sentiment. And so I added dimensionals and we're going to put this, the edge of it right at the edge. Of our uh, die cut and it's going to go over a little bit. So just like this. And so we have our linen thread. So now we're going to add the clouds with the birds. So I'll turn that over and add dimensionals. So I've added um, five dimensionals, two on each side, one in the middle. And then we're going to put this and this is going to go over to the right a little bit of our square that is already printed on our card base. So like that, and then we're going to, I put three dimensionals on our other clouds, and then we're going to bring that over to the left, and make sure we get it straight. And here's our first card from March Paper Pumpkin, here's to you. And this is this design. And of course, then we can bring in the envelope liner. And we have this card ready to send. Let's go ahead and make the second design. So for the second card, we're going to need the Pretty Peacock card base. We're going to need three labels because they have Happy Birthday repeated three times. Got a little piece there. And we'll need the printed layer to go on our card base. We'll need dimensionals. Um, I, we do not need a linen thread. I don't think. We'll see here. We'll just go one step at a time and figure it out. Okay. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would love for you to subscribe. Click that subscribe button. Click thumbs up if you like this video. And again, I'm just going to use the edge of my block. I'm trying to use as much as I can from the paper pumpkin kit so you can see that it is all inclusive. And then we're going to take this and we're going to pop this up with dimensionals. So I did end up putting, I think, 12 dimensionals. I'm using the mini. If you have the regular size dimensionals and wanted to use those, you certainly could. But of course, again, I want to use what is out, what comes in our paper pumpkin kit. And so we'll just kind of center this on our card the best we can. The new catalog is about ready to come out. If you do not have anyone to 
send you a catalog. I would love to send you the new annual catalog in April. So, uh, but let me know now. So as soon as you can let, let me know, the sooner I can put you on the list and make sure that you get a catalog. But I can also send you one uh, whenever you're watching this. Just let me know and we'll make sure you get a new catalog. Let's go ahead and do our stamping. So I'll bring in our ink spot. And our happy birthday. And the reason I'm bringing the ink spot to the stamp is just because the ink spot is smaller, so it's easier for me to do this. Um, keep turning that over. You could, you can also hang on to the ink spot and ink your stamp up this way. So it's just basically whatever works for you. Okay, so. I'm going to stamp straight down. Okay, and then we'll ink this up. So I will go ahead and do it this way. And I think I need a little more ink. That's what I like about the photopolymer. You can see and can usually kind of tell. And you really want to uh, put a lot of pressure down unless you're using a Stamping on a magazine to give you a little cushion or a pierce mat. With a photopolymer, that kind of helps because a photopolymer does not have the red cushion like the uh, our other stamps. Okay, like our cling stamps. There we go. All right, let's get this ink put away. I keep turning it upside down. I just realized that we did need to add our birds right here, but I think we can do that. So let's go ahead and ink our birds up. And... That right here. There we go. And it looks like the linen thread they have wrapped around this, which I should have wrapped around before we before I put the this layer on the card. But I think we are going to be able to. fix it. Now you can make this without using the linen thread. So I'm just trying to get that cap off because all right and then I'm going to place that end of the twine right there and then we are going to wrap this around and all I have to do is just pop up that one layer of dimensional so just <clears throat> the bottom three okay and we can fix this but it is easier to wrap this around the card Um, before you adhere this layer on the front of your card. But there's usually ways that we can fix things, right? Okay, and then I am going to cut about right here. And I will straighten this up. So I made like three. I have three rows of linen thread and and I think I'm just going to put a another dimensional right there instead of a glue dot 
and then I can tuck this in. There we go. And now we can add our happy birthday. We'll add dimensionals on those. So I've added three dimensionals on the back of each one. We're gonna go ahead and we'll place this right on the water. Kind of right there. Pick up our next one, make sure it's going the right way. And put that kind of like right there on the linen thread. And then the next one, we'll put it right under. So here is our second card. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. And this one also has a liner to go with that matches for the envelope. You just take the liner and just slide it right in the envelope. And see how that matches. So here is the first card, as the directions say in our paper pumpkin kit that we made today. And this is our second card that we made. And you can follow these directions and you'll have eight cards, four of this uh, design and four of this. But now I'm going to make some cards out of the box. I'm going to make some alternatives and share those with you. So in my first alternative card, I used a basic white and I used the large rectangle, uh, stitched rectangle and I die cut this out and that's going to be for the front of my card and I'm going to bring in uh, the image of the flowers. And the colors I'm using in this card will be gray granite for to stamp my birds, um, old olive, I'm going to be uh, sponging that on, uh, bumblebee for the flowers, and then balmy blue for the sky. So I have this card made, I'm just gonna kinda show you um, to get started. So I just stamped the flowers, and I left a little bit of a space here because I'm going to go ahead and stamp some, old, or use a sponge and add old olive. So I'm just gonna ink up my stamp using Bumblebee and then put it right beside there. I'm gonna go ahead, since this is photopolymer, I'm gonna go ahead and bring in my stamp and Pierce mat because it gives a little bit of a cushion. So I am just stamping across. So you can get about four on this card for um, flowers. You're able to stamp the flowers four times, I'm trying to say. Okay, so then what I did, I just took a some Whisper White and I just use my scissors and cut this as a as a guide and then I went ahead and laid this right here or actually excuse me let's do it the right way let's turn it around lay it the right way I was gonna say that didn't look right so I laid it this way and because I want my blue up here see so I need my mask here and I just <clears throat> added this for a little bit of uh, security to hold it down to hold the mask down although I did take another uh, sticky note and I just put it right at the top because I did I do not want any ink in that trim at the top so I just went ahead and 
I covered it like that. And then I took, and I cut my sponge that we received, I cut it in quarters. And um, this is the old olive one, but here's, and then I just put Bombay Blue, I just cut out, used my oval punch, and so that way I would know when I use it again. And then just opened the Bombay Blue, and I did add a little bit of Midnight, uh, or not, Misty Moonlight rather, but I, I most of it, I used the Bombay Blue, but then I just, for a little bit of contrast, I did go ahead and add some Misty Moonlight. So I start off in circles and then just come on my paper. And you just keep doing that to get the consistency that you want. And then I added a little bit of Misty Moonlight to cover contrast. And then when you take that up, you'll have your sky. And then I just did the same thing at the bottom here. Here I just covered up the stitched edging. And I used Old Olive and my sponge for Old Olive and, and added some, some Old Olive ink at the bottom. And then I stamped my bird. So let me show you the card. Move this out of the way. So here is the card. The card base is Bumblebee. And then I cut the Pretty Peacock card base from our kit in half. So I used half of this uh, card base that was in our um, as the layer. And then I added the Whisper White or the Basic White cardstock that I stamped and added the balmy blue and a little bit of misty moonlight and the old olive and I decided not to stamp uh, a sentiment on the outside um, I did try to decide you know I did stamp a sentiment and cut it out with another stitched rectangle but I just didn't think I liked it on the front. I did add uh, two pearls here and one up here. So what I did inside is that I went ahead and used another stitch rectangle and cut out basic white and then stamped May Your Journey Through Life Take You to Many New and Exciting Places. So this is one alternative card. Let me show you another one. On the next card, I went ahead and used the insert that would go into our envelope. And then I used uh, the Pretty Peacock, the other half of uh, the card base I made on my, I used on my first card. And this is the card that I came up with. So again, uh, Bumblebee card base, the Pretty Peacock that was a card base that I cut in half. And then the, so I did a three panel and these are one and a half by three. And then I added, um, may your journey through life take you to many new and exciting places and added a uh, bumblebee ribbon on the front. So my second alternative card. And I have one more to show you. So for the next card, I cut uh, basic white, five and a fourth by four. And I took a uh, stitched rectangle and went ahead and cut out like a little window. And then I just placed this over here and I put a little sticky note here and then I again I used uh, Bombay Blue and my sponge and I sponged into this card and then I stamped the trees and I used Old Olive and I stamped my trees here and I also stamped in gray granite a couple of birds and let me show you uh, how this card turned out so here is this card and then I decided to add uh, vellum and I added vellum just to cover the window that I worked in so you have a little bit of a frame 
and I added pretty peacock just to get a, a little strip underneath the vellum and then stamped here's to you above and I just put the little pretty peacock strip to get a little bit of interest I guess you would say now I do want to tell you on this particular card uh, you need to use stay it stays on uh, ink to stamp onto the vellum and then I adhered this by just putting um, four glue dots and I could have added some clear glue on the pretty peacock strip if I wanted to but I did not and then I added a couple of um, basic jewel rhinestones and I had one up here and I took it off and I see it's made a little bit of a glue mark so I may need to go ahead and add another embellishment up there but when you stamp your uh, your trees you because this is this is thick uh, it, you may find that you have it doesn't give you a real clear image right at the edge so what I did is when I finished I took this off and then I just kind of took a sticky note and then I just stamped the trees one more time is what I did and then up here in this corner because I did have this sticky note right here so when I finished with my sky then I had a little white space uh, that wasn't colored with the balmy blue so I just took that off and was able to hold it and then just go ahead and, and add some some balmy blue and uh, so and this is the card so I know a lot of you like to use vellum and so I'm trying to use it a little bit uh, more but I think it kind of I like the way that the vellum kind of shows uh, on this card so let's look at the three alternative cards. We have this one here. We have the three panel. And we have this one here. And I did forget to mention, I did use the stencil on this card here. So if you can see the clouds, so I did use uh, the, the stencils uh, for the clouds on this card. So let me know uh, which of the alternative cards that you like the best. I'm Terry Hartley at Rustic Barn Cards. I appreciate you watching. To get more information, you can go to my website at rusticbarncards.com. If you place an order, less than $150, XG9DEHF2 is the host code. Have a great week.